just shown you just a little improvised melody using a very exaggerated movement in my volume hand to demonstrate one more technique for using the volume loop. Now, before we can really discuss what's just happened, I'd like you to rewind and watch again. Then, come back, and we'll take this further. So go ahead, watch it again. Good. I hope you did that. Now, <clears throat> we've looked at the possibility of using both the flat hand or the fly swatter, and then using the wrist. Depending upon what kind of theremin you have, particularly when you use the wrist, if you're using an ether wave standard, you've got this large negative space inside the loop, and that can also help for articulation, to dip your hand right in and bring it back out again. On a B3 or B3 Deluxe, that's almost impossible, because on an ether wave, the volume loop gets a little bit wider out here, but on a B3, the volume loop is more of a sort of extended V shape that gets narrower the further away you get. In either case, also on the EtherWave Pro, it's pretty much the same type of thing as on an EtherWave Standard. So, what we're looking at now is finding a spot on the volume loop that seems to respond more than any other place. And for this, you're just going to need to test to see. If you lift your hand up outside, inside, eventually you'll probably find a spot that responds somewhat better. It seems a little bit more clean, or there just seems to be a little bit more of an advantage to using an area. For me, and for this ether wave, it's sort of right at the back edge on a slight diagonal right about here. If you were looking at the circle in the volume loop as a complete circle, I'm looking at about 7.30, 8 o'clock. But right here seems to be the most advantageous spot. This is crucial for what you're going to see next. What we're looking at is an exaggerated move. It's a way to be able to articulate or repeat the same note or get a cleaner articulation between notes by coming up with the volume loop and then Did you hear that? Did you hear the differentiation between the two notes even though they were the same pitch? What happens is you can use an extra swipe, for lack of a better word, I'll call it a swipe down, which you saw exaggerated in the demo, and what happens is your hand passes in and out of that threshold, that spot, between right at the edge between noise and silence, and gives you a microsecond of silence. And the resulting silence gives you that clean articulation of the same note or of a different note. Listen again. We lift up on this pitch. Now, I'm just going to use that swipe down. the second pitch. That was a little bit muddled. It takes some practice, and it will take practice for you searching around the loop to find where that one spot, do you hear it? I'm not touching the loop. I'm coming close to it and going in and out of that threshold. The threshold exists on the side as well as on the top, just as the control space around the pitch rod exists in three dimensions, under here and over there. The magnetic field created by the volume loop is underneath, out here, out here too. So, search very carefully, try to find that spot where you'll get that second tone. Now, as I said, my movement was exaggerated to be able to show you what's happening, but when you begin learning how to use it, the movement will not be nearly as exaggerated at all. You'll barely even notice it. As a matter of fact, you'll find a way of doing it, most likely, without ever going down past. You'll just pass through it and then back up again. 
it is really, really effective for repeating notes, as I said. It's also just one more way to use that volume move. Practice with these three methods. Flat hand, wrist, and the swipe down. The swipe down. Soon, we'll look at some more advanced techniques for mastering that volume loop, but for now, these three ought to serve you very, very well.